Pro Wrestling Junkies, and today's guest hails from Laredo, Texas, trained at the Dreamwave Wrestling Academy under someone named Mustafa Ali. He's worked for Powerhouse Wrestling, Rocket Pro Wrestling, Illinois Elite Wrestling, Underground Championship Wrestling, and just recently, along with Fabian Barbosa, won the PWE Tag Team Championship. On October 10th, Yes. On October 10th, he'll be making his debut for Supreme Pro Wrestling in South Bend, Indiana. He shared the ring with the likes of Brian Blade, Excalibur, Johnny Swade, Matt Wilder, Jack Carpenter, to name a few. Staying in at six feet tall, two inches, weighing an amount that would destroy me in any type of fight, I give you the American outlaw, Tyler Bodine. Hey, Tyler, what's going on? I'm doing all right, man. That was, that was a hell of an introduction. Did I get everything right? I always worry about that. There's a lot of anxiety. Yeah, no, that, you, that was, I mean, you can, I can definitely tell you did your homework, man. That was one heck of an introduction. Yeah, <laughs> I have a lot of time on my hands. So hey, nothing wrong with that, man. <laughs> so, so you recently won these tag team belts. Is, is that a great feeling to like take home a championship belt with you? It, it is. It is. It's, um... Um, it's my first tag team title I've ever won in the business I've been six and a half years. Um, I've known Fabian for probably over a year and we've only, we've only been teaming. That was actually our first time ever teaming together. Oh, well, how did that come about? Um, we're, so we're part of a group called uh, the, the International Alliance, which basically means that uh, I'm from America, Fabian's from Poland, and we got another guy from Puerto Rico. Got it. And uh, our, our manager is Mr. John Park. Well. It was supposed to be me and the guy from Puerto Rico, but unfortunately he had um, circumstances behind, beyond his control. So it was me and Fabian, and uh, we ended up going over and winning the tag titles. Wow. Now, do you like, is there ever a time where like you have to run out to Walgreens or something and you bring the belt with you in the car? Like just like the two of you? My, I have sometimes. <laughs> um, I have from time to time. Um, it's. I usually, like, I don't take it into Walmart with me. <laughs> Do you take it, but you go to a mirror and, like, at your home and like, look oh, at yeah, it absolutely. yourself? Yeah, yeah, some, I do do that sometimes, yeah. All right. So you you said you grew up in Laredo and yeah. eventually moved to the Midwest in Illinois. What was, what was your uh, childhood like? Were you uh, introduced to wrestling at an early age? Yeah, my uh, my uncle got me into wrestling, and uh, I just, I've always loved wrestling. It's been a passion of mine. It's my first love. And at what point did you know, like, you know what? I might be able to make a career out of this, or I want to. As soon as I first started watching on TV, I'm like, this is what I want to do. Um, now, what about like wrestling? Did you love back then? I, I like wrestling back then more so now because back then it was more about storylines and it was um it wasn't this PG crap we got going on now. <laughs> so um so Mustafa Ali, obviously we all anyone who's watching this knows who Mustafa Ali is. How did you hook up with him? and start your training. So, so he was he was wrestling at uh, Dreamwave. Um, and obviously he's, he's from the Chicago land area. He was wrestling from Dreamwave and then he uh, retired from wrestling to go be a police officer in Bolingbrook. Oh. Well, he also um, started up a training school for Dreamwave, it's called Dreamwave Wrestling Academy. And I'm like, you know what? This is my big break. I can do this. So I, uh, I pay, you know, I make my monthly payments, and I uh, started training with him. And I'm not gonna lie, it was tough. It was brutal for a little guy. He pushes you to the limits. Were you like physically ready, like your first day of training? Like, did you think you were no. physically ready? I thought I was, but I wasn't. And so, what was like the end of day one like? Are you like beaten up? I was, I was ready to puke. It was oh. brutal. And what about like? Psychologically, we were like, "Can I?" Did you like have any doubts that you were going to go back the next day? Um, I knew I was going. I knew I was going back, and I was super. I was. I mean, I was ready for it. Um, oh, there we go. 
Yeah, I had, I had my girlfriend go get it for me. Oh, so, man, she's great. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, this, is, uh, this is the PWX Tag Team Championships, Power Off Wrestling Extreme. How much does that weigh? Um, I'd say probably about a good 10. 10 oh, wow. Pounds. Yeah. And you get to keep it as long as you guys hold the belts? It's yours? Yep. yep. Wow. It, it also helps, too, that I literally only live a mile from the promoter. Oh, so he knows where to find you. <laughs> he knows where to find me if he needs it. But yeah. yeah, totally. But no, so, back to the Ali thing. Um, yeah. Training was brutal. And after the first day, I did have a little bit. I'm like, man, is this really for me? But I'm like, no, this is my dream. This is my passion. This is what I want to do. And then unfortunately, six months into my training, um, right when I was getting ready to be done, I was in a car accident. And I had to get, get out of wrestling for a few years. And oh, of course. Wow. Those two, those two years sucked, man. And I came back, I came back in 2014. And I've been wrestling full time since 2014. Wow. And and was was that the, when you uh, couldn't wrestle? Was that hard on your psyche? Like even watching yeah. wrestling was that tough? It was. It was hard to go watch. It was hard to watch wrestling on TV. It's like I was kicking myself in the butt every time. You know. So had you had your first match yet? But prior, no. No. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't have my first match until 2014. Okay, so were you when you they say to you, listen, your first match is you know tomorrow or next week. Sure. Do you have to do anything to prepare for that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of times we don't know who necessarily we're wrestling going into the show. Mm -hmm. Most of the time we do, but sometimes we don't. Luckily, I knew who I was wrestling, so I would uh, prepare myself mentally. And obviously, in my first match, I'm nervous as all out. get out. Yeah. I, you know I'm. I want to make sure I do, and my first match sucked horribly. It was it was horrible. Did did people tell you that? Well, no, but I knew. Yeah. I knew myself that it sucked. Did you so, know during the match that it did? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but practice makes perfect, and I got better the next match, and so on and so on. Yeah, everyone's got to have a first match. Yep. Um. So, the the morning of your first match. Was that the first thing, you, when you wake up, is that the first thing that's in your head? Yeah, I'm thinking like, man, I can't mess up. I'm gonna, and unfortunately, when you think you can't mess up is when you do mess up. Sure. Um, but no, I was, I was super nervous going in there. So how do you, where do you start developing like the American outlaw character it, 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 throughout your training? I've always, well, um, I used, I've always loved like, Outlaws, rednecks, cowboys, and whatnot. Sure. And I'm like, you know what? I got the beard. I got the dad bod. You know, I like to be, I mean, I'm a brawler. I don't do high flying stuff. I don't have big muscles or six pack abs. I just, <laughs> and I'm like, perfect cowboy. So I'm like, and you know what? I'm, I just started developing the character, the American outlaw. Mm -hmm. I started out as the American redneck, and I would come out with the American flag and Slowly throughout the year, throughout the couple of years, I slowly transitioned into more of a badass. Uh -huh. I, I was a good guy for the majority of my career. Now I'm one of the most hated people in the Midwest. Is I, that I, so much fun? Yeah, I, I hate people. I hate everybody. I don't like anybody. Oh God, that's got to be so fun to be able to do that. So, I, mean, I don't even like you, but I'm just doing. That's fine. What about animals? I love, I love animals. Yeah, I, I got three dogs. Oh, okay. So, okay. So you have relationships with things that you like. Yeah. Living creatures. Yeah, my, my girl, my girlfriend. You know, she, I like her. You put up with her. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, she, she laughing, but yeah, no. She, okay. But yeah. Go ahead. So, I, I, not, I wanted to ask you this, but we'll jump to it right now. How sure. does wrestling, like? You know, pri prior to COVID, were you wrestling every weekend? Yes. M so majority every weekend. I'd have a weekend off here and there, but um, up until up until COVID, and then once COVID hit, um, it was it, me it messed me messed, it messed with me like mentally because wrestling is like my drug, and it was like, um, for instance, when someone's addicted to crack cocaine and you, and they quit taking it. Mm -hmm. It start. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Messes them up. Well, I obviously can't wrestle because of COVID. So I'm like, I'm like 
it's bouncing off the walls. Like, I got to do something. I got to get out. You know, luckily, I mean, it was, let me tell you, it was the longest six months of my life. You should have smoked crack. <laughs> I, I, uh, my, uh, I work for DCFS, so that would have been good. Enough. Yeah, that would be a problem. Yeah. So was it hard, like prior to COVID, was it hard maintaining a relationship, out, you know, with, with your girlfriend, I, for example? Um, well, we actually uh, started dating during COVID. Oh, but, okay. Uh, um, and she knows how much wrestling means to me. She knows that, you know, wrestling my first, you know, wrestling my first love is always been, I've, I've given up relationships. I've lost relationships. I've missed birthdays. I've missed anniversaries. You know, because mm -hmm. of wrestling, that's part of being the business. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's you have to, that's paying your dues. Yeah, she's she's one hundred percent supportive. So it's, it's, it's has she has she been to a, a match of yours? Yeah, she actually she was at, she's been she went to Michigan with me once, and then she also saw me uh, win the tag titles. Oh, oh, awesome! Oh, that, she must have been re been really impressed. With that. Yeah, she she works sometimes on the weekend, so she doesn't always get to go. But when she can go, she usually does. Okay, cool. All right, let me ask you like kind of like the last wrestling related question. Sure. What do you love now about wrestling, or what do you still love? That there's so many different places that you can go and wrestle. Like back in the day, there might. have or promotions in Illinois. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, Illinois probably has 50 different promotions, but I, I like, and a lot of people don't like that, but I, I like the variety. Mm -hmm. every, every locker room is different. If you go to a locker room in Chicago, it's going to be different than a locker room down in Southern Illinois. Sure. So I, I like the variety. Have you, have you, um, have you traveled like West or East for, uh, to, for to wrestle or you staying in the I Midwest? I traveled out to Wyoming. That's the farthest that I've gone. Oh, there. that's a cool place to go. It was a long man. Let me tell you, it was the longest thirteen hours of my life. Drive. I mean, we drove. All, it was me, my team partner at the time, and my manager. We drove all through the night. Long, long thirteen hours. Oh my hours. god! Straight, straight from Illinois straight, to. Yeah, straight from Illinois. Yep. Wow. Um. Yeah. So, I'm gonna uh, let you go. Um, so I don't get in trouble, and maybe so you don't get in trouble by your I'm girlfriend. Fine, man. <laughs> um, oh. I'm going to ask you five non-wrestling related yes or no questions. And you can say yes or no, or decline, or elaborate, or don't say anything. Uh -huh. You ready for it? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever had a mug shop taken? No. no. Okay. For $1.2 million, would you have all of your teeth removed? Yes. Okay. Have you ever thrown up on an airplane? No. Are you a fan of amusement parks? No. Okay. I hate roller coasters. Oh, good. So do I. All right. I used to love children. Do you hate children as much as I do now? No. Okay. Do you have any? Do not have kids. Oh, I, okay. Oh, you're living a good life. You <laughs> got some gold, a girlfriend, no kids. <sighs> I trade anything for that. <laughs> so, um, so October 10th, you're going to be in South Bend for Supreme Pro Wrestling. And uh, do you have anything else scheduled beyond that? I don't, unfortunately. I had a show scheduled the 17th, but due to COVID, it got moved back to it got moved to November. Oh, so things aren't going to get back to normal for a while, right? Uh, it, it, this 2020, I mean, nobody will ever forget 2020, but no. let me tell you, it, it, it sucks. 2020 is the worst year in probably a century. And I'm nervous that it's going to get worse when, like, people start getting, like, a normal a normal cold in the fall or in winter and think it's COVID right. and go to the hospitals, and it's going to get Absolutely. crazy. I uh, hate to say it, but I have a feeling it's going to go into 2021 as well. I, I, this, I feel the same. So. All right, so let's talk again uh, later this fall, deeper into this COVID crisis. Absolutely. And we'll, I'll, I, I want to hear about uh, how, you know, the Supreme Pro Wrestling, uh, your debut goes there. And sure. 50 other questions that I have. No problem. Hey, I'm, right. I'm always up for questions. Marcus, I appreciate you having me on here, man. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much. And be safe. And tell your girlfriend to be safe and the, and the dog. And um, we'll talk soon. Thanks, Brad. You All have right, a good take, night, buddy. You too. Take care. Thank you.